Oh, hi, loves. I'm Melanie Yvette, and welcome to The Other Beauty Conversation. is like this new one that I have it has like the flat range it's like it's for white cooking for white people no one cooks like this no one cooks with this <laughs> I don't what am I doing with you I'm sorry what was I what am I going <clears throat> what am I going to do with you Let's be clear in my what, what am I going to do with you tap 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 ain't nothing Listen, these people, I mean, it's just not for people who cook. I mean, I don't, know, I don't even know what to say to that. Like, you know, cooking for white people. Like, <sighs> but you know, I'm in here making a whole, a whole meal. Mm-hmm. A chicken burger with brioche and rosemary potatoes and every damn thing. That looks good. Girl, we cooking. I had a Mexican omelet with turkey bacon, and now I'm doing a berry blast smoothie with spinach. Sound that one? Very tasty. Mm. Very. Blueberry and spinach. I'm recording just because I wanted to do a test. Okay. Let me see. I feel like it's working. I feel like it's working. Do I need to close my window? I don't think so. Yeah, it's working because I see the microphone. Watch, as soon as we start, a police car is going to stop outside the window. That happens in all of mine. Like, oh, so good. How are you, Lauren? Napier. I, you know, I'm good. I'm just, I, I have to be honest. Because stress, exhaustion, anxiety, bouts of, uh, bouts of, I think, I would actually go ahead and call it depression. It's hard. Yeah. This is tough. So, I mean, you you actually are very active with self love and self care. I do my best. To hear you say that, kind of, I don't know. It puts a lot of things into perspective. Like what? That even the people who seem to not have it together, because I don't do that. Like, of judging people and thinking that I can read their life through social media or just like we've hung out like you're my girl but just thinking that people who always have a system are always on it like that sometimes they don't break the system or break down every now and then oh my god it's important uh to just be honest about that and I mean I continue to be honest about it because one it's helpful for me Mm -hmm. And I think it does, I don't do it for other people, but I recognize that my transparency is helpful uh, because when I say things, people respond. Um, You know, and Lauren Napier Beauty, it is, it's not who I am, but it is uh, my introduction to everyone. Yeah. That's how you guys know me. That's how people know me. That's how... um, (laughs) That's how, um, that's, yeah, that's the introduction. And so they see the brand and they see this person uh, behind the brand and the voice behind the brand. And I think the brand itself is aspirational. So if you're aspiring to be somebody or not somebody, because I don't think people are aspiring to be me, but if they're aspiring for the overall lifestyle, then they're like, oh, wow. Okay. Everybody, like you just said, like, this is raw and authentic and it's real and it's cool to not subscribe to the we don't yeah you know how are you um handling the business during covid because i texted you last week about the bobby brown new co- like the collection that launched and i was like oh people like we're doing we're launched. okay this is different and then i just thought about you Hang on, what happened with the launch? I mean, last week seems like 10 years ago. Like, I never had, like, I'm, let me I honestly up. haven't really focused a lot on it because I asked you that question. That was not a point of this 
podcast episode because I wanted to know if we needed any more beauty brands. Because when I saw that launch, I was like, okay, you know, Bobby Brown is an icon in beauty, but I didn't see the the unique difference between this collection and what she's on before. And it just got me to thinking, like, what what's going on in the beauty world, especially during COVID? What's going on in the beauty world is that there are not enough unique voices uh, and voices um, and perspectives with opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry, opportunity for people who have voices and a new perspective. Uh, Bobby Brown created her own line. It definitely had a point of view. It definitely resonated with people. Um, and it seems like this is a reinvention of something that already exists. I think mm-hmm. from my experience and I, I, because um, it's hard to divorce myself and my feelings because I have a brand and I have a brand that um, is, uh, has a point of view and really needs to be seen and heard, but is not necessarily seen, heard, or respected by the investor community. Um, I take these things very personally right now uh, because there are brands that we do need new brands. We do need additions to the diaspora, uh, the beauty wardrobe and the beauty closet, but they don't need to be um, a cardigan set from Bobby Brown. I wonder if it's like, come on, Bobby, give us something new. Give us something, um, you know, if, if you're going to come out with something, give us something that is magical. Yeah, exactly. I can't see. yeah. It's not, I, I don't see that. I also think that, you know, there's something iconic about sticking to your shtick, I guess you would call it. I mean, it's not a shtick. She really changed the makeup game in her own way. But I agree. I had a moment of, well, what's the point of this new collection? And I understand that. Here's my thing. I do think that there are women who are of a mature age who are still seeking products from her. Um, And, you know, she walked away from her company, like her namesake company. But, you know, there's no shade. I just felt like, well, what what are we offering different now? And I'm bored. I know that sounds me. I'm just bored. And I don't know if it's because of quarantine. You know, I'm like, I don't care. And the, I want you to give me something, like you said, magical and give me something that like makes me say, what? Why do I need this? But I want it. Have a yeah, blow me that away. Yeah, blow me away dazzle me and I'm just you know I'm not dazzled I'm not blown away I'm not inspired yeah I'm sure that she's I'm sure that there's somebody out there that she is inspiring because what I can say about beauty what I can say about these conversations and products and is that there are people um there's something for everyone Mm mm-hmm but then I'm-, and I'm sure she's got her audience. But again, I just continue to say uh, the access that people have that do have vision, that do have ideas, they are innovation, uh, innovative. Uh, they're not. They're not being seen. They're not funded. Yeah, they're not being seen. They're not being spoken to. They're not being respected. So. But then it's like you see these heavy diversity digital campaign ads running across everyone's social media platform. And I'm like, me being a social media manager in the beauty world, I always feel away sometimes because I know what's going on behind the scenes. And I've had so many arguments behind the scenes when I was working for companies. Like, okay, well, where's the brown skin, dark skin? Where's the black girl who isn't particularly like in your favorite hair texture category? which would yeah. be like 3A, 3B. Like, where's the 3C to 4C girl? Like, I had to have those arguments with people, and it was so frustrating. Because I could see how it would be. Like us. See, well, here's the deal, is that a company who is authentically speaking to a Black woman in a Black audience, it's going, to, it's going to be authentic. It's going to resonate with us. You can do all of the puppet show song and dance performances on you social can. media. Uh, but if your collection doesn't resonate, if your uh, if if your products aren't meeting the needs of these women, we will know. So, okay. you know, we are so used to be we're so as a as a consumer used to, and I'm speaking about black and brown women, mm-hmm. black women. I can only speak for me, my my black self. 
but I'm so used to being um, um, disappointed by product uh, offerings and also ad campaigns that don't represent me um, and that also don't reflect my needs. So that's, that's not something that Black people, I believe, are looking for. What we're looking for is the product that we're looking for, not the ad campaign. It's like, stop talking at us and talk to us by providing product offerings that we're looking for. That would solve all the problems. I remember being in a meeting, I won't say the company or the brand, but I was in a meeting and they had just scored a very big major black um, entertainer. And she essentially was like the hottest person at the moment. And they were getting ready to, you know, focus on her marketing ad, like her promo and everything. <clears throat> and they wanted people's like perspective, people of color particularly, right? So I'm in this meeting and I'm just listening to people say, oh, this is great. I mean, it was such a dry, fake diversity. Look at all the people that work behind our scenes. Like, it just was so, I was just so bored. And I remember being the last person who spoke in the meeting. I was like, man, they're going to fire me. Because so I was like, this is terrible. And you know what I mean? I just, well, I didn't mean to be, but I was like, it's terrible. This is not going to work. When I go to your Instagram page, it takes me like two to three thumb scrolls to find a black girl or a woman of color that looks like this person that you just signed on. And you're essentially profiting off the fact that you want to be fake diverse by using her. When really, when people go to your website, people go to your social media, they're going to realize that this is a joke. You don't have anything representing her. First of all, they didn't have anything in her actual life complexion but you don't have anything representing this whole uh phenomena of diversity now and this was on the heels of fenty launching so this is years ago <clears throat> not trying to give away where it was but this was around that time and i remember saying to myself before fenty hit the market i was like fenty's coming and people need to look out and people were like no one's taking it serious because she's a singer uh what do you mean oh how many celebrities put out makeup lines and i was like mm, nah, it's something different it's different, you know, it's different because and I didn't want to she, she's a cultural icon with her finger on the pulse of what's happening. Um, and her experience is probably similar to all of ours. Even though Rihanna, it's like Rihanna is um, on the lighter side of the diaspora, right? Of the complexion, so the, the complexion scale. So it still might have been easier for her to find a color, but not a color that was a true match. Right. Right. And so like, I, for me, my complexion is also oftentimes the darkest in the selection. And as a black woman, I know I'm not the darkest black woman that's out there. There should be behind my color, my color, there should be a whole 12 colors behind that or in front of however you want to describe it. But and also, <clears throat> for me, it's like if I find my right shade, it's not the right undertone. It's ashy. Mm -hmm. It's not better. Because I use Maybelline Fit Me in a mixture of Makeup Forever. Okay. Like the Makeup Forever is like warm. And I mix that a little bit in with the, the neutral Fit Me foundation. But even then, I still have to do all that. Honestly, I don't mind it anymore because I don't know if I'm ever going to find a foundation that's perfect. I found one a long time ago. Don't remember the name, but it was a spray. Very high end. Was it Giorgio Armani? Someone had it, was it YSL? Someone had a spray. The Air Mist. Found the Air, Air Flash. Maybe. It was high end. And I stopped buying it. Or maybe they discontinued it. Something. And then Mac had one like that too. It was like a spray that did really good, but they discontinued that one too. I don't know. They discontinued that a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, there are aerosol cans, so people were turned off by aerosol. But I mean, listen, the thing I is, do. from a makeup artist's perspective, no foundation is going to be your exact color match. Like you, if you want an exact color match, you're going to have to blend. The idea of foundation is to get as close to your skin color as possible and then blend um, and mix colors. But you got to get us in the ballpark, you yeah. know. You gotta get yeah, yeah, they're not even. But do you think there's a brand that's doing it right, like extensively? I, I mean, Pat McGrath's foundations. 
I wouldn't even go there with Pat. I mean, who I think has done it right for a long time is NARS. I like NARS. Um, I, I'm a NARS kind of ride or die as far as their foundations go. Um, they have different coverage types, but then they also have different complexions. And they were very, very, very early on with their uh, broad coloring. Because even in like 2007, okay, maybe even before that, 2004, 5, 6, they did a color range extension that sucked me in and I never left. So I've been wearing NARS for like 15 years. And everybody in my family is wearing it because that's what I'm wearing and that's what's working. Um, and, you know, my mother, my sister, and I are three different uh, yeah. uh, foundation colors. And so we're all, all still wearing NARS. So I think I NARS is doing it right. And as they continue to develop colors, and develop textures and um, and formulas. They do a good job. And they also let me tell you this about NARS. They did a campaign in 2015 or 16 with a black woman with an afro. And I was in Australia, and that campaign was in Australia. NARS 2000. Yep. And it, when I tell you that campaign was in Australia with all those, you know, Caucasians. <laughs> you get about her. Black woman campaign. I rock with their concealer. I always like their formulations. And I've always thought that they were ahead of the great ahead of the game, but they're classic. They're not a trendy brand. They're not a brand that you're running to for the latest trends, for the newest palette launch. So you have to have a I think that you get to NARS when you get to a certain age. If that if you're a makeup girl. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woman of a certain age. Girl. Goodbye. Goodbye. I can't find it, but I'm gonna look it up because they have pushed the edge. I mean, people always felt like Mac was that. Mac, in my opinion, was always the trendsetter. Yeah, and I always rock with Mac, but I do feel like they kind of fallen in the background lately because of so many brands that kind of mimic what they've done and or just offer, but at a lower price. Like Nyx really came in. Nyx really came in, and, and I was like, like, but I think for Mac, you we all have to give Mac their credit. Oh, like, always give them their flowers. Always, because Mac was the first one to be all races, all ages, all genders, all everything. And they really meant that. Um, you know, the founder of Mac, a, a chemist and a makeup artist, right? The, the most perfect team um, that you can have that created this product that, you know, is just, is mammoth, right? But it was the really the first one that that met the needs of 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 everyone you know and and they were authentic and it wasn't like we were okay with them because what did they have like nc45 nw45 yeah. nc42 uh nc55 but they they had it right and they were trying and so that's why mac was so successful because their attempt was authentic and we, we know that. You know when somebody's trying to play you and when somebody's not. And so that's why Mac did so well. And so, you know, I will, like I said, I'll give them their flowers because um, because they started out, I think, with good intention. And that resonated with everyone. I agree. I definitely think that Mac will always be a staple in the beauty community. It's not. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't, they, they're not going anywhere. I think it's just the conversation who's who's a part of the conversation and who's starting it and i don't well, like that. i would like to see them do some new uh exciting things the lo the launches that they've had have mm -hmm. again i need some razzle dazzle that's my thing lauren what else do we need to see right now like for real i'm not even trying to be funny i'm trying to figure out what i want to see like what do i want well you can tell me what you want i can tell you what i want but you go first what i want is I'm wanting beautiful skin. I'm wanting foundation that gives you a beautiful payoff without looking like you're wearing a million layers of makeup. 
but that's always been my aesthetic. Always been your thing. And my thing too, I cannot stand the foundation of this cake tone. I don't, I also don't contour. So go on. I mean, I'm looking at you and I'm like mesmerized, okay? This is what I want to see from a brand. I want to see you. Right. You. I mean, it's the truth. But, you know, for real, I'm like dead. But that's what I want to see. I don't contour. I don't bake. I don't do all that stuff either. Because, like, let me, people somehow don't understand the history of contouring. And, you know, contouring came from stage makeup before there was lights and cameras and you were on a stage like during the Shakespearean era and there was people that were in auditoriums that couldn't see you when men played women. That's what I heard. That's, That's what contouring came from to make a man's face look more like a woman's face. Because and that's why what you see. Well, that and that's that's why you see, um, and I don't want anybody thinking that I'm making a homophobic statement because I'm absolutely not. But the the prevalence of contouring started to become more visible to people when, you know, like RuPaul and Kevin Aquan were out and or were, when they were like hidden in the 90s and they like remember when Kevin Kevin did that book uh changing faces or making faces something I, I remember face forward I have it sitting right here face forward and he had two books rest in peace and he contoured and he cut and he chopped up all these women's face with makeup to look like somebody else because that's what contouring does and so listen no shade you if you love it, then you love it. Right. I was asked what my aesthetic was. This is my aesthetic. So, um, and contouring has I, purposes. Like contouring. Listen, I, I I like it. I like it for you. I like it if you like it. You do you. Whatever makes you happy. But my feeling also is those that when you're contouring, whose face are you structuring? Whose face are you building? Mm. What is the end goal? Because. If everybody's contouring their face the exact same way, then we're ending up with the exact same face. Well, that's the whole point, I think. And, and, and you know, what we need to look at, well, then we need to look at the values that you're placing on how you look, who you look like, and what you want to look like. Because if you are contouring and highlighting your nose so that your nose looks more slender and European, then, you know, <laughs> you might want to take a look at yourself and how you really feel about yourself. I mean, I I I, I want to say no judgment, but that's actually a, a judgment. But it's also a thought. Like I'm just trying to be a thought provoker. I don't contour my nose. I don't contour my face. I remember I was um, working at the Today Show, and Oprah's makeup artist was next to me, and he was talking, 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 and he was like, "Oh, you need to do this to your face, and do that to your face, and contour your nose." And I was like, "Sir, first of all, I didn't fucking ask you what I look like this morning. That's number one." Second of all, I don't care about your opinion. That's number two. And third, I'm very confident in who I am. I like who I am. And that's that. So, like, but I, your, uh, your unsolicited opinion of me changing the structure of my face is damaging. Um, not to, to me, because I'm not a person who faces those types of insecurities, but what if I had been? Right. And I think you know, about that a lot. And I also think about that even when I'm speaking about how I don't like contouring and things like that. Because to be honest, it ha like I said, it has its purpose, but I want people to feel comfortable doing what they want with their, their face. And that that makes you feel confident if that enhances your beauty in your, in your opinion. That's great. I, I'm always, I want women and men alike to do what they want. But I do feel like contouring became excuse me, probably like the last, what, six, seven years, it became this trend that forced many women and men to think that their faces have to look a certain way in order to be pretty. And that I didn't like, because like you said, and I don't think people know where the history of contouring began. And I read that and I thought I was losing my mind when I was, I thought contouring started on men. Like, I feel like men were contouring their faces before us because they wouldn't even let women on stage, on stage yeah. right so technically men were doing their face beating their face before we were but i also and i say that to men who like get mad at women from wearing makeup like please stop but i also agree that there needs to be diversity in how people are 
I don't even be in train as artists and I'm not an artist. You are. So you can have a POV on this better than I would, but I'm starting to even see some makeup artists online and on Instagram, just create the same look for each face. And it's like, that's not artistry to me. If you're just on the same technique on everyone, you know, if that's your signature, that's one thing. You, the way Kevin Aquan, Kevin Aquan, is it Kevin Aquan? Because I used to say Kevin Aquan, Kevin Aquan. Um, I believe that it is however you're comfortable pronouncing it at this point. Sorry about that. I mean, I tried to show him the respect, but Aquan is what I say. Um, I don't lose it. <laughs> Yeah, um, he had a signature. <laughs> you get on my nerves. He had a signature. That was his thing. And I feel like now you just do, I see people doing makeup like that on everyone's face on Instagram. Well, that's because people go to the school of YouTube and the school of Instagram. But why? Just can't... Listen, just because you can do a contoured face on your face doesn't mean that you are a makeup artist. Um, it means that you have the ability to mimic what you see. And that's a, that's a talent as well. But that's a talent, yeah. You know, um, it is. I just want to be diverse. If you're a makeup artist, if you're a makeup artist, your ability, and you can have a signature. The one, I think it's, Na, is it Nambo? Um, I got to look him up. He does some beautiful makeup. No matter who it is, he kills it. Um, it's it's a signature because it's very like bedroom sexy, but it's effortless and it, it, it's sexy all the time. And I love him as a makeup artist because I love to see what he does with every woman from like Ellen Pompeo to Gra on Grey's Anatomy to Selena Gomez to Joan Smalls to I think I've seen him with Kerry Washington. Um, that's really, really beautiful sexy, lusty, um, it's done, but it's not overdone makeup. Like, it's very red carpet. Like, it's beautiful. Um, and But I guess to go back to contouring and to being a makeup artist, the, what, the skill that you have to have as a makeup artist is to be able to enhance someone's look without totally altering their appearance. And I there know. are fundamentals of makeup that exist that we all use, but if you're only gag is uh, or your only ability is to you know contour highlight dust around the whole face to make shadows in the hairline and then dust that same powder throughout the cheek the chin down into the neck then i mean i'm underwhelmed what I'm is, what are the like top essentials every woman needs for, in terms of makeup like we, we said you don't really need to contour your face. So what do you need? Because I have my own perspective on that. I don't feel like you need a big old massive ass box of makeup. So like, but do, I know people who will buy everything that just launched. And I'm like, relax. Well, some people, I mean, like, and also some people just enjoy buying makeup. That's true. That's the color. But I, mean, I know people who do it and they feel like, okay, this is going to help again. This is going to enhance. And I'm like, no, actually, you just need the basics and you'll be fine. So the things that I think everyone needs, I think everybody needs a really good foundation and concealer. Um, because if you have a good foundation and concealer, you can alternate or you can use them together depending on what function is or what the function of your makeup needs to be. Like, are you going to pick up kids? Are you just running out to the grocery store, but you want to be cute in case you see somebody? Um, do you want to be fabulous for, you know, whatever it is, like, your concealer and foundation can can work together. I think everybody needs a beautiful mascara. And I have theories about mascara because mascara, oh. my, my mascara is very important to me. Um, mascara is hair, okay? Mascara is hair, guys. So you don't want to use something that is not a formula that matches your hair. So if you catch my drift, you understand what I mean? Like uh, a long wearing mascara can be damaging to eyelashes that maybe are a little bit sensitive, that are brittle. Mm -hmm. If you find that your eyelashes break, then maybe you need to get a formula that has more moisture in it. Gotcha. So things like that. So mascara is, is a, it, it's, um, it's a product that I think is, is essential to your makeup wardrobe. 
I wear my mascara. My mascara is expensive. It's Armani or Gucci Westman. Um, I love but, a good mascara. Listen, I love a good mascara too. People ask me all the time, are my eyelashes fake? Nope, they're not. They are not. Also, what is the Lash Paradise Carbo L'Oreal? Milk mascara is good too. Really? I'm never yeah, gonna I have one in a silver tube. I use that one too. It's a, it's a good mascara. I, I recommend that one. That's not um, the marijuana one, is it? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, okay, that's milk. Yeah, milk. And then I like a brow. I need something. Like, you don't have to have caterpillar brows. Like, I see also people doing a little too much with their brows. Like, caterpillar brow. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, Groucho Marx, like, you, okay, I'm giving y'all old film references because, you know, I'm of the, I'm one, I'm a well-rounded woman with, with a, with a vast, um, category of catalog of references for not catalog <laughs> I'll give you but um I'm not with you. people well okay eyebrows just sometimes look some of these eyebrows that I'm seeing are just too much some of y'all eyebrows are just excessive I mean I love a good I love a good shape to a brow because I did a whole brow tutorial on my uh Instagram because I use a razor blade to do my eyebrows the little um, tiny ones? Yeah, like a straight razor, which I say to everybody, I, this is like thugged out, thuggery when you got a, when you got a straight up razor on your face. I feel like I have to put the disclaimer out that I'm not responsible if you slice your eye open, but this is what I do to my eyes. But what I'm saying is some people's eyebrow game is just crazy strong. And it's like, I don't want to see you and be like, hello, eyebrows. I just want to see you. I just want to see you. And so there's that. But, um, but I do believe that like a brow gel or a brow powder that's going to, um, that's going to define your brows is important. And the reason that it's important because eyebrows are the frame to your face. Like eyebrows are the top frame, your mouth and lips and teeth are the bottom part of the frame. So that brings me to the other product that is a must have is a good lip. I think everybody needs a, a nude lip. Yes. And everybody needs a bold lip. So it doesn't, that's what I think too. Mm -hmm. And a bold lip of your choice. And a good gloss. I don't do a lip gloss. Not so often. Um, I just have something that can just, I always like a good gloss because if I don't have time to get the red right, if I don't have time to pick the right nude, I just uh, gloss it up. I'm out. Well, if you really want a real nude, what you can do, depending on the color of your lips, is if you go over your lips with your foundation and then throw a gloss on it, you got your nude right there. Mm, I'm going to try that. Try I it. tried that with concealer one time, and it was kind of cute. Yeah. Depending on how different your concealer is from your complexion, but I do my foundation a lot. Pretty often, I'll just go straight over my lips and keep it moving. But see, my lips are pink. Well, that's why your nude foundation will sort of diffuse that. Your not your nude foundation, but your foundation uh, diffuses the pink, and then you've got a nude color. That's the essential of a nude. It's fleshy, but it's not the color of your skin, and it's also not pink. So you get the perfect mix. Can you use a concealer to? Um, I know we got to wrap soon, but can you use the concealer to diffuse your lips when you're doing a bold color on top? I think you can, it just depends on the concealer because like sometimes it'll get muddy. Oh yeah. yeah. So you want to use a, a little concealer and then just press maybe um, a square of, of tissue or toilet paper just to mm -hmm. uh, take down the moisture and then go over with your with your brighter, bolder color. Gotcha. I mean, there's all kinds of tricks and techniques out there. And I mean, when we're removing the makeup, we obviously should use more Napier Cleanse Wipes because I need to get, I'm keeping them here. They're always, I need to head. get, look at my bag. I need to get more. Hold on. I'm going to order today because I'm running out. Cause you know, I do the 40 count. Okay. So let me give you, I do the 40 count. I want to try the flaunt next because I always do cleanse. You should try flaunt. Flaunt is um, the like, okay, so first of all, Lauren, it's your beauty. We are sold. 
out of pretty much everything on the website. Flaunt mm -hmm. is um, actually the best. Yes, ma'am. You got a little cleanse. Um, Flaunt is the one that I use. Um, it gives you a little boost of like vitality, a little boost of brightness. It's got um, aloe, cucumber, chamomile, but then it's got a noni fruit extract, which has vitamin K, lycopene, selenium. So it increases your cell toner turnover, okay. which is really good because none of us are going outside and getting that vitamin D. So that's what we need. It also helps to protect when you're sitting in front of your screen and being exposed to harsh UVB rays and things like that. Um, Cause no matter what you're doing, whether you're on a zoom or you're on the phone, we're all really heavily exposed right now to that light. So I use, I have them at my desk, like I said, and I use them sometimes midday into the day just to like clean off before I go into the second half. Um, so or we use them to remove makeup. Sometimes you'll use them now because we're home a yeah. lot. You just refresh your face. Like you would do like a spray. Yep. Sort of. Okay. I'm going to try yeah, that. And I have a spray too. I use Nature Bisse. It's sits next to me so you know it's I have my um I'm in my office right now but I have a little beauty station at my desk because uh, duh we need that I, yeah, I was I usually do a rose toner spritzer type of thing rose water yeah I'll do that I'm gonna do so flaunt is sold out no 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 cleanse is sold out but flaunt is there and then um, if you guys, okay, so I, right now I have my limited edition scarf. Ooh, I want one. Okay. Let me order. So let me just tell you about this limited edition scarf, you guys. 2020 has been crazy. And we sort of started out talking about mental health and just like depression and, uh, just the overwhelming year that has been. So I decided to have this scarf, to design this scarf for the Spanish designer to commemorate, um, 2020. Because at some point, it will be worth commemorating. Now, that's true. I, uh, yeah. The scarf is 50% satin, 50% silk. It's stretchable, but you can use it as an accessory. I use it as a mask. I also wrap my hair with it. You can use it as everything. But on the scarf, I want one. So on the scarf, it says like all these things, right? That helps me survive 2020. So basically, it's like know thyself. Um, no, this email did not find me well. Annoyed, but thankful. Super blessed. For the allies. Oh, the neighborhood boys are out. Um, ready for you, but They're ready. But, like, did you vote? Like, I have all these sayings, basically. It says, inner peace is the ultimate prosperity. Assess and redirect. Because this year... Oh, it also says, it's been emotional. Because this year... Has been emotional. It's been a lot. And, and I feel like it's okay to like wrap yourself in levity and wear that. Be honest. Um, and just wear it and own it. Get it. I'm getting one. Oh, and so when you get a, when you purchase a scarf, you also get a deluxe sample of flaunt. Ooh. But I will say this. I'm taking next year off. And this is the last opportunity. Well, not the whole year. I'm going to take some time off. Uh, for just like mental health, because this year y'all are running me ragged as a business owner. And I think like anybody else as a human with empathy, but um, I'm going to take some time off to just reset and then start to work on the next generation products in the collection. Okay. Um, I'm really excited to build out a, some more skincare innovations. I think everybody's going to really, really love them. I mean, I've been asking you, you know, know. <laughs> what's coming next, but I get it. Like we talked about earlier, investors and whatnot do overlook a lot of Black-owned beauty businesses and just Black women in beauty that have perspectives. But I'm excited because I know people just don't understand like how good your line is. I mean, they get it. You're obviously making big moves and you're scaling, but... I just cannot wait for the full collection. I know something's coming one day. Like the full Oh, things collection. are coming and it's, and it's so pretty. Be. It's just so pretty. It's and this is in my bathroom. It's a it's like decor. I use it as decor. Well, that's what I say about Flaunt. Flaunt is giving you the ultimate. Oh, it's so sexy. Right? Giving you like well, I decided to do a chrome, right? Because I feel like if you've got it, you definitely should flaunt it and you should be proud of it. It's reflective. It reflects your own beauty. So that was really why this package is chrome. Um, and it's 
speaks to everything that we said. I like a positive body psychology. I like a positive skin psychology so that you feel good about yourself and you're not succumbing to beauty standards. You, you are your own beauty standard. Mm -hmm. So what do you, um, I want to, um, let you go, but I also want to know, when do you think that this tell all book or this beauty book that (laughs) the memoirs, when is is this memoir coming out? Wait for the memoirs, darling. Okay. Um, Oh, listen, they'll, they'll come. I believe it. I have a story to tell and I, and, and I have no qualms about spilling tea. I have no qualms about burning bridges because I've done that. My friend said to me, he's like, you don't oh, just, no. burn. <laughs> you don't burn a bridge. You like light it on fire with gasoline and then you throw a uh, grenade at it on the way out. You're a tourist, right? Yeah. That's why I knew it. Yeah, you know, yeah. listen, I mean, I'm not, it, it's not my goal to destroy a relationship, but if it's over, then it's over. <laughs> my thing is, from okay, people probably like, well, what the what could she possibly have to say about the beauty industry? Is what I would say. But like, where are you trying to take it? Like, where are you trying to take the Lauren Napier pla- Lauren Napier platform in terms of because your perspective is so strong and outspoken. It, you know what? It, it is. It's strong. It's outspoken. It's um, like I like to say, it's aspirational, but it's also. Uh, you know, this is a conversation that I had with an investor literally just yesterday. And the conversation was that, you know, I'm a black woman who from a young age was exposed to uh, art, culture, and luxury. Right. Now, I recognize that that's not everybody's experience. And when I say everybody, I mean just black people. That's actually not. Hold on. Let me close my window so I can give you some good information. Okay. Hopefully that's better. <laughs> um, you know, that that's my experience. And that's an experience that I want to share with people, all people. <laughs> but right now we're talking to black and brown people. And because my experience is aspirational, I'm, I'm sorry, my experience is unique. It means that it brings other people into the fold. Right. It, there's a story because when, when they see us, they see us as criminals, mm-hmm. as like, every ne- negative stereotype that you can think of. As, or black women, particularly black women. Queer or brown black women, you're miserable, you're insecure, yeah. you're not happy with yourself, like you're not confident. That's something that I always felt. I'm so tired of that narrative. Even And so the- that has to stop. And I think, right. it, so for me, that's where the brand has to go. It has to be a, a, a brand that breaks down that barrier and completely changes that narrative and that stereotype of who we are. We are thoughtful people you know we we dynamic we, yes we are dynamic and that's something that i say we are not a monolith you cannot just speak to all of us in one way each one of our experiences is different and we need to be spoken to in that way we need to be respected as business owners and we also <laughs> need to be respected as consumers right. uh, as, as citizens of this entire country we can see that from the voting community and what has happened this year um and so that that is it's so important to me to change that narrative and that conversation about us and to make us more visible um and i think that you've done that way. well <clears throat> um you've done that well but you've also done that in the very lauren way it's something that that's why i remember when i met you i was i was obsessed with you because i just feel like one of the things that frustrated me growing up was not seeing a lot of black girls just living in not necessarily luxury but in self love yeah. it doesn't it doesn't always have to be <clears throat> you know a brand a, a designer or a label or you're on a yacht or whatever i don't care about that yeah. but there was just this tone of black women are always aspiring to feel good enough and i was kind of tired of that because while I understand that many of us do go through our own insecurities and we are pressured by this world to not feel beautiful, I have just, and this could piggyback off of your unique experience, I did grow up just not really thinking about complexion. You know, yeah, was I teased before? Yeah, but it wasn't a, a reoccurring thing. And I think a big part of that was my upbringing too. I wasn't fixated on my complexion until the world was fixated on it. And it, it was a perspective of, how are you so confident being dark skinned? And it's just like, what? What, what a ridiculous so, fucking question. But 
Yeah, <clears throat> that type of content, I feel like, I know we got to wrap boo, but that's that's what I love about um, Lauren Napier, and I'm so happy that you're going to expand it. I mean, yeah, so I mean, it's time, and there, there's, like I said, there's plenty of time to have conversations, but where I want to do is continue to lead and be a leader and a voice that represents Black women in such a positive way because we are not a monolith, we are dynamic. From, you know, the representation with the scarves and everything that I just said we experienced this year. And we experienced it to such a, a deeper degree because our humanity was on display from us dying at overwhelming rates to COVID to still experiencing police brutality and, and violence in the middle of a time where we all should have been, um, you know, supported. Uh, by by our greater community, especially our government and by extension, our law enforcement. So, you know, I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of feelings. I never stay away from it. I never shy away from it. And I think that's another reason why the brand itself resonates so deeply is because going back all the way back to authenticity, you know, you have to be authentic. You have to be honest. I pour myself <laughs> into my business. And I will continue to do that. And that's why I'm taking some time to reset mm -hmm. so that I can fill my cup. What are you going to do? It all back out. Because when I tell you the navigating the investor space, navigating the beauty space, once you get to a certain level, it is, it is exhausting. Uh, it's I, the word I constantly use is demoralizing because the, this community does not see us. They know the numbers. They know our spending That's the power. part. Yeah. Yeah, they know the numbers. They know the our buying power. They know the value. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, they know our buying power and they know how about this? They know that what starts in the black community ripples out to the greater community in the world. It's and they good. refuse to invest in it because they're scared that they're going to lose the grasp and the stronghold on capitalism. Right. But um I'm here to say, as a people we always rise. So like I told the investor yesterday, this train is leaving the station. You can either get on or you can watch me from afar because it's moving, you know? I and think the beauty train is a lot. <laughs> the black beauty train is moving, period, in my opinion. It's well, slow, yes, we have but it's access. moving. We have different access to capital, to distribution, but we are also stuck yep. because things like uh, social media, algorithms, um, ad space, ad buying is prohibitive when you do not have investors there, and not investors, but when you don't have the funds and resources allocated to competing with other brands uh, and conglomerates, you know? And so, and so it's a challenge, but you will get there. And I, you know, it's always, you know, we always got to jump higher and run faster. And that's, that's where we are. And I wish that weren't the case, but that's why I said, wait for the memoirs. We waiting. And we, <laughs> listen, I'm serious. And I, I peep it. I see uh, <clears throat> not too long ago, and we can end it at this, this conversation about Black beauty brands not being owned by their original owners anymore. And it was like the, the beauty brand, the owner. And, you know, I worked at... Uh, dark and lovely and I worked alongside of a lot of people that were on the Carol's Daughter team and I got so furious when I saw this conversation I didn't say anything so I'm just terrified of Twitter but <laughs> girl Twitter scares me I get on there I'd be like y'all so mean but I just yeah. got Ooh. furious because if people only knew why sometimes the black business owner is no longer running their own company. If you understood sometimes how these companies are set up to have to sell to the conglomerates because they don't get the right amount of funding and investment from the get-go to scale on their own, it's actually a setup at times. This is not a, like, this is a system. This isn't just, oh, they just wanted to sell their brand because they wanted to cash out and they don't care about the Black community. What are you talking about? Yes, it's definitely not that, but also, um, we were not in positions of power, right? And exactly. sometimes yeah. the other thing is you get tired of of the this business because it's grueling behind it is so you. grueling. And I mean, people Price, don't and I, to the and I don't, which it is. I don't even want to speak on it, but Lisa Price was always in the office every single day, every single meeting. Like, you don't know. You do not know what goes on behind the scenes. The other thing I think is that we don't know about business. 
you know, the reality of what she did was something that was major and, and iconic. <laughs> right. And what I want to do is to be able to grow Lauren Napier beauty all the way until it's like a drunk elephant. It's a, it's a billion dollar brand. And then I want to sell it for $850 million. You know, I want to do that too. And there's no reason that a company can't do that. It's just that we as a people have to understand, like, get out of this. Nobody knows the inner workings of how Fenty Beauty is structured. She doesn't own 100% of Fenty Beauty. Like, come on, guys. We need, before you open your mouth and fix your face to say something, at least be a little bit informed of how business structure and corporate structure work. Um, Is Rihanna that bitch? No. Absolutely. But she <laughs> that's is. The truth. She brought a point of view. You know, every he we changed wanna, the industry, and did, she got or that. you want to look at like Tracy Ellis Ross with Pattern Beauty, or you want to look at Pat McGrath, y'all. These women do not own a hundred percent of these companies; they just don't. And I, this is not—it's not, it's not um, shade. It's not dismissive. I have the utmost respect for every person that I just named, but everyone started from a different standpoint and you have to understand how business corporations and structures work before you come in and criticize what black founders are doing in order to grow and scale their brands and make their products available for you on a broader level. You know, she care because, because Lisa price could have been cooking uh, scrubs out of her kitchen for the rest of her life, mm -hmm. but it required capital. It required a distribution and she didn't have that on her own so mm -hmm. she had to structure her business and sell parts of her business so that she could do that nobody's mad when bobby brown sold to estee lauder at all nobody's mad when linda rodin sold to estee lauder or joe malone or any brand with a name that's under the it's estee lauder yeah they are all 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 yeah yeah you know, y'all are mad at Michael Kors. Tom Ford isn't owned 100% by Tom Ford or Mark Jacobs or, you know, I'm naming all these brands, but like, these are big brands that everyone knows about and they are under a house and they're under a house because someone absorbed them uh, so that they could have distribution and so that they could sell to the masses. And the thing is, this is the thing about black businesses. We actually want to get there, but we want to get there smart. So you don't sell 50% of your business. You sell a certain percentage to help you get to the next step. And that continues to grow. Listen, I um, will wait for the memoir. Wait, wait, There'll wait. be a whole section on this. And I'll make sure that, you know, I get everybody set up. Because, again, that's the goal. The goal is to make sure that we understand, um, as a people, how to run and grow businesses and to be successful and not just be the consumers, but to own the business. And not even just to be the influencers that represent the businesses. Because let me tell you something, when I was working with influencers, I started to see, even though they are the new advertisers, a lot of us weren't getting the money that we should have. And when I started to realize what a lot of white influencers were making in the beauty world, as opposed to black influencers, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. you know, and that's, so, yeah. that's also part of um, valuing yourself mm -hmm. and making sure that you're not thinking out of your own pocket, mm -hmm. but understanding that, uh, that, that you are valuable and you are an asset. And right now, right now, you are the greatest asset to a brand because they're looking for black content creators. So you can charge okay. whatever you want. I've been telling people to milk it. I've been telling people to milk this moment. Who knows how long it's going to last? Milk you know, it. I've been, my, my rate went up 25% the last two months. I was like, oh, no, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. And I mean, I want to commend you for that. I, I was on a, on a podcast um, and one of the, one of the influencers said, ask for everything. And that's what I do. I ask for everything. Um, and they'll, sometimes they'll tell you no. Mm-hmm. But you remember that note. Mm -hmm. And you also will get more when you ask for everything than when you just limit yourself. Yeah, don't limit yourself. You know, throw a rate out and multiply it times two because best believe, um, what's her name? Kirsten? Who? <laughs> Becky? Whatever her name is. Goodbye. Bailey? Don't start. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't play with me. Haley, Haley is her name. Um, Don't play with me. <laughs> She's asking for it, and now when she asking for it, she's getting it. And then, the, then they're like, um, "Do you need a car to get to the location?" Yeah. Oh, we'll uh, send you an Uber credit, um, car, whatever it is you need, a uh, stipend for food. Do you have a yeah food preference? <laughs> they're they're getting all of those things, um, and that's Absolutely. something that I learned from working in the TV industry for many years as well. It's like remember, I was at Today Show over there with Bobby in- interning. Remember, I saw. Yeah. I was like, oh. I mean, listen, and that's where I worked. I, you know, again, again, we'll talk about it. We will. We that's awesome. our, today's show, Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Fallon, like HBO, Netflix, Hulu. I've worked on so many different shows. I've seen a lot. I've witnessed a lot. And that those things informed me, you know? And they teach you. I, yeah, yeah. And they so. set you up, though. They set you up. I, I really feel like you're getting ready to do some different things. That's the goal. Thank you, Lauren. I have fun talking to you. I'm gonna have to, we have to do this again. We have too much to talk about when it comes to beauty. I know. And life. I feel like people just were gonna be obsessed with your perspective. I hope so. I hope so too. I mean, I'm trying to bring a new perspective to the world. It's going to be one of those um nuanced, impactful things, I feel. Like it's not gonna be your typical you're not going to be Walmart. You're going to be more of a Target or oh, a like Walmart. a boutique <laughs> because Walmart's for everybody and Target, while it's for everybody, it's very, it's curated still. Yes. Target is curated, but I, I have, I have thoughts. I have feelings. I do like Target. I mean, I'm a Target shopper and occasionally I'll show up at Walmart. You're more of a boutique. I'm definitely a, 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 I'm a standalone store. Yeah. You're a standalone boutique in Soho somewhere. <laughs> Yes, that's what you Let me not discredit Walmart. I'm like, I do shop. I be up at Walmart all the time, but I'm not buying no makeup from Walmart. Yeah, um, maybe not. There are other things, I think. And Walmart is actually a company uh, that that does give back to the community. So yeah, you're right. So we're going to go ahead and, and be kind. Be nice. Okay, well, thank you, my love. <laughs> it's been a good time talking to you. All right. Um, text me. It's always, and let's figure out how we can see each other soon. See each other. Can we? COVID 2020. I'm not going home for Thanksgiving. So if you're around, are you going home? Mm-mm, I can't go. Like, I can't choose between parents. Oh. You can't, like, you can't, I can't fly to Texas and be like, oh, I'm only going to my mom's house. Or, oh, I'm only going to, like, so, and I can't make my sister's house the Grand Central Station of COVID germs, you know? I'm not going so, like, to. I, I go home yeah. and I stay with my sister, but I can't have my dad come, then my mom and her husband come, then all my best friends come, and then her house has been inhabited by 20 people from 20 corners of the country. Like, that's not okay, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll be here. here. If you want to let I think I might have a vacation, though. I'm totally doing a vacation here for Thanksgiving. I'm going to go home for Christmas and then come back here for New Year's to spend with Boo. And then, I don't know, just like chill out. I think I'm going to do yoga by myself for New Year's though. And then maybe do something with Boo, like right after that. How sweet. I don't think I'm doing any of that. I'll be staycationing in uh, probably not Thanksgiving because Black Friday will hit and I'll be responsible for all the oh, that's watching. Um, I won't vacation until January. But when, okay. when that comes, it's like, goodbye, y'all. <laughs> I'm out. Okay, so let's try to get together. And then if you're here and you want to, like, just link up for something chill, I can meet you someplace <clears throat> before they shut us down for maybe, like, Because mm-hmm. you know, they're going to shut us down yeah. for Thanksgiving because people can't act right. Yeah, so if we can do, like, tea or coffee and walk around since they'll probably shut us down, let's do something like that just to get out the house. You're in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, but you don't have to come. Where are you? Harlem, right? Harlem. Yeah. Oh, girl, we got to find a meeting. Because are you all the way up? Like, you're all the way up in Harlem? Uh, in the 20s. Oh, that's not bad. Mm-mm. I don't want to come to Harlem. I actually like Harlem. And I have a few people there I could probably try to see, like, social distance coffee or something. But, you know, we'll, I'll figure. Where are you in Brooklyn? I'm in Bushwick. Mm. It's cute over here, and there's a really cute rooftop right next to my door. Huh? I have a car.
harm. I mean, you could, I mean, if you I can, do I can do that. Put, put, and come down because listen, there's a cute spot around here, like right connected to my building with a rooftop and they have a cute cozy inside with a fireplace. And then there's another place not too far that we could walk, oh, drive, I can meet you over there. And it has like this rustic, just like sexy feel. And I go there to read books and they have good cocktails too. Then that's where it will be. Okay. Okay. I'll set so you up. It's a date. All right. <laughs> you get on my nerves. Have a good Saturday. You too. Bye, darling. Bye, love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.